claims under subparagraphs A and B in subclause 20.1 of the Fiddick Yellow Book 2017 refer to additional payment and extension of time EOT claims, respectively. Here is a detailed breakdown of the process involved, including the timeline and relevant clauses. Detailed step-by-step -step process for claims under subparagraphs A and B. 1. Notice of Claim 20.1 Action the claiming party, typically the contractor, must issue a notice of claim to the engineer. This notice should clearly identify the event or circumstance giving rise to the claim, detailing the facts that justify why the contractor believes an entitlement exists. Time limit, the notice of claim must be submitted within 28 days of the contractor becoming aware, or when they should have reasonably become aware, of the event or circumstance causing the claim. Clause reference, Subclause 20.1, Claims. Purpose, this initial 28-day notification period is intended to ensure that claims are raised promptly, allowing the engineer and the employer the opportunity to investigate and take any necessary steps to mitigate the effects of the event or circumstance causing the claim. Two, submission of the fully detailed claim, 20.2.4, Action. After issuing the notice of claim, the claiming party has an additional period to compile and submit a fully detailed claim. This claim must include a description of the basis of the claim, supporting documentation, records, and calculations that substantiate the amount or time claimed. Time limit. The fully detailed claim must be submitted within 84 days from the date on which the claiming party became aware, or should have become aware, of the event or circumstance that gave rise to the claim. The 84-day period may be extended by mutual agreement between the claiming party and the engineer, allowing flexibility if needed. Clause reference, subclause 20.2.4, fully detailed claim. Lapse of notice. If the claiming party fails to submit the fully detailed claim within this 84-day period, or any extended period mutually agreed upon, the initial notice of claim lapses and becomes invalid. To formalize this, the engineer must issue a notice of lapse to the claiming party within 14 days following the expiration of the 84-day submission deadline. If the engineer does not issue this notice of lapse, the notice of claim remains valid. Purpose. This 84-day period ensures that the claiming party has sufficient time to gather and present a comprehensive claim, giving the engineer all necessary information to evaluate the claim's merit accurately. 3. Engineer's Consultation. 3.7.1. Action. Upon receiving the fully detailed claim, the engineer initiates a period of consultation with both the employer and the contractor, aiming to facilitate an agreement on the claim. During this period, the engineer engages both parties in discussions to reach a mutually acceptable resolution. Consultation time limit. The engineer has a period of 42 days from the date of receiving the fully detailed claim to conduct the consultation and attempt to reach an agreement. Alternatively, the parties may agree to a different time frame for this consultation. Clause reference, subclause 3.7.1, consultation to reach agreement. Purpose. This consultation phase provides an opportunity for open dialogue and encourages the engineer to mediate between the parties to reach a settlement without requiring a formal determination. It promotes early dispute resolution and can help prevent escalation. 4. Engineer's Determination 3.7.2 and 3.7.3 .3. Action If an agreement is not reached during the consultation period, the engineer must proceed to issue a determination. This formal determination includes a reasoned decision with supporting calculations, providing a clear statement of the engineer's view on the claim based on contract terms. Time limit for determination. The engineer has an additional 42 days to, to issue this determination if no agreement was reached during the consultation period, unless a different period has been mutually agreed upon by the parties. Clause reference, subclause 3.7.2, engineer's determination, and subclause 3.7.3, .3, time limits. Purpose. The determination stage offers a neutral decision from the engineer, which serves to resolve the claim in a formal manner, minimizing further disagreements and enabling the project to proceed smoothly. MAR 5, notice of dissatisfaction, 3.7.5. Action, 
If either the employer or the contractor disagrees with the engineer's determination, they may issue a Notice of Dissatisfaction, NOD, to formally indicate that they do not accept the engineer's decision. Time Limit This Notice of Dissatisfaction must be issued within 28 days of the party's receipt of the engineer's determination. Clause Reference Subclause 3.7.5 Dissatisfaction with Engineer's Determination Purpose the NOD provides a structured method for the dissatisfied party to challenge the engineer's determination. It initiates the process for further review through the dispute resolution mechanisms outlined in the contract. 6. Referral to the Dispute Avoidance Adjudication Board, DAAB, 21.4, 21.4.1, and 21.3. Action. After a notice of dissatisfaction is issued, either party may refer the dispute to the Dispute Avoidance Adjudication Board, DAAB. The referral must be submitted within 42 days of issuing the NOD. Include a complete presentation of the referring party's case, referencing subclause 21.4.1. For a three-person DAB, the referral is considered received on the date it reaches the DAB chairperson. Access to information and site. During the DAB's review, both parties must provide the DAAB with full access to relevant information, site, and facilities to ensure the board can make an informed decision. DAB Decision. The DAB has a period of 84 days from receiving the referral to issue its decision in writing, unless both parties agree to a different time frame. Clause References. Subclause 21.4, Obtaining DAB Decision. 21.4.1, Referral to DA, and 21.4.3, DAB Decision. Purpose. The DAB provides an impartial, binding decision, facilitating dispute resolution while allowing the project to progress. The DAAB's role is designed to prevent further escalation by addressing disagreements through a neutral, structured process. 7. Dissatisfaction with DAAB's Decision 21.4.4 Action If either party is dissatisfied with the DAAB's decision, they may issue another Notice of Dissatisfaction with the DAB decision. This notice must clearly state that it is a Notice of Dissatisfaction with the DAAB's decision, along with reasons for the dissatisfaction. Time limit. This notice must be issued within 28 days of receiving the DIAB's decision. If no NOD is issued within this 28-day period, the DIAB's decision becomes final and binding. Clause reference. Subclause 21.4.4. Dissatisfaction with DIAB's decision. 8. Amicable settlement. 20.5. Action. If a notice of dissatisfaction has been issued after the DAAB's decision, the parties must attempt to settle the dispute amicably before proceeding to arbitration. This phase offers a final chance for informal resolution. Time limit. The parties have 28 days after issuing the NOD to seek an amicable settlement. If no settlement is reached within this period, either party may proceed to arbitration. Clause reference. Subclause 21.5, amicable settlement. Purpose. This amicable settlement phase provides an additional opportunity for resolution outside of formal arbitration, potentially saving time and resources for both parties. 9. Arbitration 21.6 Action If amicable settlement efforts are unsuccessful, either party may escalate the dispute to international arbitration. Arbitration is conducted in accordance with the International Chamber of Commerce ICC, rules by one or three arbitrators as agreed upon by the parties. Finality. The arbitration award is binding, final, and enforceable. If the arbitration award requires payment, the amount is due immediately without further certification or notification. Review of DAAB decision. The arbitrators have the authority to review any day decision that is not final and binding. Clause reference. Subclause 21.6. Arbitration. Purpose. Arbitration offers a definitive resolution to disputes, providing a binding and enforceable outcome. It is the final step in the dispute resolution process under the FIDIC Yellow Book 2017. Let's face it, the world of construction contracts can feel like a minefield sometimes. All those technical terms and legalese can really do a number on your blood pressure when you're trying to make sense of it all. But take a deep breath because videos like this are here to be your lifeline. By breaking down those dense clauses into plain English, we're arming you with the insights to navigate contracts confidently. If you felt that weight lift after watching, don't hesitate to give it a thumbs up. That simple like is a vote saying, yes, I want more clarity on this stuff. But don't stop there. Pay it forward by sharing this video with others in your network. 
We all know someone who has lost sleep pondering the finer points of indemnification or notification requirements. This is your chance to be their hero. And of course, for a steady supply of contract knowledge that declutters the jargon, subscribe to Growth Mindset Company right away. We're constantly tackling new topics and breaking them down into bite-sized, actionable tips. Ring that notification bell while you're at it. That way you'll be the first to know whenever we post something new to make your job easier. At the end of the day, understanding contracts shouldn't be a headache. With resources like these, you can cut through the complexities and get straight to the heart of what matters. No more stressing, no more guessing, just confidence. Like, share, subscribe, it's your direct path to becoming a construction contract superhero.